dear students in this lecture we will study about the type of stresses that are generated inside the body when we have different types of external forces depending upon the external forces we can classify the stresses in many ways so this video is regarding the forces and the stresses generated according to the external applied load basically stress is we generally denote it with the symbol sigma and it is written as force by area so now this is the basic formula of stress but what is f what is a and from where it comes from understanding this is very important so i will start with the basic from a very basic so consider consider a body let it be a cylindrical bar and it is it is acted by a force external force f so now first we have to understand that whenever i talk about the system of forces in strength of material i will always talk about the equilibrium of the body when the body is in equilibrium that means all the forces that are acting on the body all the forces that are acting on the body the total force net force is equal to zero then the body is in equilibrium otherwise if it is not in the equilibrium the body will be in motion that will accelerate the body will accelerate now the what when the body is in equilibrium the force acting on the ends will be equal so let's suppose if it is fixed from one end and the bar is like this and the f is acting on the end there is a pull force so obviously when i draw the free body diagram it will be equal and opposite forces on both the sides so now i concentrate on this cylindrical bar so let's assume a section so on this section there must be some internal resistive forces that is holding this body around this section otherwise what will happen the body will break from this point or this section we know that if i put a particular force on a bar it will not break initially it will break at some particular value of force so that means there are some internal cohesive forces so there are some internal cohesive forces that hold them so if this is f this is f so that cohesive forces must be equal to f and if that cohesive forces if this is let it be external force and if this cohesive force f is less than f external the body will break so that means when we put external force there must be some internal cohesive forces and that should be equal to and that when it is in equilibrium that must be equal to the externally applied force hence resistive force per unit area on which that is acting will give me stress so actual definition of stress is resistive force per unit area so from where the resistive force come it comes from the cohesive force between in, inside the material so this is very basic about the the stress or you can say the definition of stress so i bet i go in a bit more detail so let's assume that 
body is in equilibrium so this is any random body this is any random body and it is acted by a set of forces f1 f2 f3 and f4 f5 so it is in equilibrium that's why the total force is equal to zero if it is not in equilibrium then it must have some acceleration but it is in equilibrium so that's why there is no acceleration so when it is such so let's assume a cross section a section plane and you can see that this cross section is of area a so when i split this body into the parts so now i can say that this is the free body diagram of the lower portion similarly there will be a free body diagram for the upper portion so we will focus upon one so f1 and f2 are there these are the external forces so on this section there are these are all the directions of the resistive forces inside the material so their direction is not always perpendicular to the cross section plane they are in all directions so let's assume a small area da a small element area da if on this there is a force delta f that is inclined at some particular angle so we can resolve it into two direction that is normal to the area and tangential to the area so in the normal we have delta fn that is normal so i can say that in the normal direction the fo force the component of force is delta fn and in tangential it is delta ft so we will go further in the three dimension also let's go further to three dimension so in a very similar scenario we have a body now i going to i am going to the three dimension that is x y and z direction so again there is some internal force i am i have a free body diagram and we have the external forces and these all are the resistive forces from the material so let's assume this area delta a so if i enlarge it so this is the delta a area so now if i resolve this delta p in the direction x y and z so you can resolve it so the component are delta px delta py and delta p z so i can say there will be three stresses three component of stresses one is let write me tau on this area delta a these are three component of stresses three directions of the stresses so so in this first x gives that the plane is perpendicular to perpendicular to x axis and second x second x in this that is giving you the direction of stress component or you can say the direction of force this is giving you direction of force and this is 
area so on like for example in this tau x means axis this axis giving me that this is the area that is perpendicular to x axis and this y is telling me that the force is in the y direction the force is in sorry the force is in y direction so now from here i get three components of stresses so the stress that is perpendicular to or normal to the section is called normal stress that is perpendicular to this section so it can be tensile or compressive depending upon the nature of loading so these normal stresses are designated by the symbol sigma so we generally give this the symbol sigma and the the tangential components that are called shear stresses and that are denoted by the symbol tau and they are tangential to the applied plane or you can say section plane so this one is the basic about you can say the basic about the stress the development of resistive forces and the source of stress